Let's talk about the Rolex predictions for 2022. As Watches and Wonders quickly approaches, I figured I would comment on the 2022 predicted Rolex releases. Not that my predictions are too different than all the other clickbait or existing rumors out there, but hey, the algorithm has spoken, so here we are. First and foremost, I actually think 2022 could easily be the year to refresh the Yachtmaster. The Yachtmaster was first introduced in 1992 and Rolex currently has a 42 millimeter Yachtmaster made out of precious metals on their Oyster Flex strap, and they make a 40 millimeter version on a steel bracelet with high polished center links. It's been said that the Submariner is the watch worn by the ship's captain, while the Yachtmaster is the watch worn by the ship's owner. The Yachtmaster looks strikingly similar to the Submariner. However, its case has smoother curves, and the Yachtmaster's bezels are made of more premium materials, such as platinum or as Rolex calls their blend, Rolesium. Over the past couple years, sailor Sir Ben Ainsley, who's probably the greatest Olympic sailor of all time, has been spotted wearing a titanium cased 42 millimeter Yachtmaster with no date. Sir Ainsley, who is a leader in his field, has been essentially field testing the concept pieces in real world conditions. He's been photographed wearing the watch on what appears to be a fabric strap, similar in appearance to the 2021 Tudor Marine Nationale Pelagos FXD straps, which were released just last year. In 2021, the Pelagos FXDs also had a titanium case, and those watches were in very high demand. So Rolex has basically already tested the market with their Tudor brand, and some fancy titanium blend Yachty would definitely be a slam dunk for Rolex. The year 2022 is actually the 30 year anniversary for the Yachtmaster, so it'd be a perfect time to refresh the Yachtmaster lineup. I would love it if they released it in a 40 millimeter case with no date on Oyster Flex with the adjustable glide lock clasp. Rolex can even keep the bi-directional bezel and the 3235 in-house movement with 70 hour power reserve. If they're feeling really generous, they could even bump up the water resistance to 200 meters. A titanium yacht master would be an amazing tool watch. I mean, could you imagine something that looks like this, but on that curvaceous yacht master case in a lightweight material that they could call Rolladium? As Watch Gringo would say, chef's kiss. Oh. The next watch people want to see refreshed is the Rolex Milgauss. The Milgauss was first launched in 1956 with the goal of being a watch designed to meet the demands of the scientific community working around electromagnetic fields. In 1956, a watch made with an iron shield that could withstand a thousand gauss was quite the achievement. The name Milgauss is derived from the French word mil, which means a thousand. But in today's world, there are plenty of watches made with amagnetic parts, so being able to withstand a thousand gauss is no longer the achievement it once was. But our scientific and engineering nerds still need a watch designed for them while they continue to make our world a better place. If Rolex was smart, they would give the Milgauss a refresh. I would definitely keep the GV glass. That green sapphire glass on the Z-Blue Milgauss is something extremely special that no other watchmaker can replicate. The early Milgausses had rotating bezels, so Rolex could easily update the Milli by bringing back a bi-directional rotating bezel. In my opinion, if Rolex was really clever, they would make the bezel a countdown bezel. Yes, you heard me right, a countdown bezel. Also, for my engineering friends, this refresh could be the perfect opportunity for Rolex to blow our minds and finally introduce a see-through case back. Am I right? Mind blown. With a few changes, Rolex would have another banger on their hands. One thing, that I feel lends credibility to this Milgauss rumor is that while we're leading up to the Watches and Wonders releases of 2022, the Rolex website is predominantly showing video footage of their vintage model Milgauss. This might be their way of telegraphing what they're about to do. Now we gotta talk about the Rolex Air King. Originally introduced in 1945, the Rolex Air King was a simple stainless steel oyster case with a smooth bezel and a simple time-only dial. In 1933, an oyster cased watch accompanied the Houston Expedition as they were the first airplanes to fly over Mount Everest. The early pilots of the aviation era were somewhat exposed to the elements, so an oyster case that could resist water, dust, and humidity was perfect for their missions. In 1945, Rolex released the Air King model, specifically in honor of these early aviators. The recent Air King model 116900 
still has the recognizable Air King font of the 1950s. The inspiration of the current Air King dial actually comes from Rolex's partnership with the Bloodhound Project. Rolex, always wanting to be on the forefront of human achievement, designed the speedometer cluster for the vehicle that was expected to break the all-time land speed record. Unfortunately, the vehicle fell short of the record, and now the project is essentially defunct. The current Air King model was released in 2016. It essentially combined the speedometer-inspired styling of the dashboard cluster with the classic 369 dial of the early Air King models. A refresh to the Air King now would allow Rolex to put in an improved movement, change up the dial a bit, and distance themselves from those losers that couldn't even drive over 763 miles an hour. Wait, that's literally faster than the speed of sound. If I had it my way, I'd probably retire the 369 dial and stick with the speedometer inspired dial, putting a zero in front of the five and call it a day. It's too bad Rolex didn't partner with Team Red Bull, right? Curse you, Tag Heuer. This year, Rolex will definitely release some new dial colors or patterns we didn't know we wanted. The palm fronds dial of last year comes to mind. Maybe this year we'll have a poppy flower dial or something specifically for that wealthy middle-aged Tommy Bahama crowd. Uncontroversially, everyone would love a black on black or coke colored GMT Master II Rolex. I'd even settle for a black on red Tudor GMT or even better, a Tudor GMT style movement in the Black Bay 58 sized case. That would be something to get excited over, but I'm not holding my breath. All in all, I'm not suggesting Rolex will do all these things. They'll most likely continue to rest on their laurels and disappoint us devoted watch lovers in a major way. How do I know they'll do this? Because they're Rolex, and there are plenty of suckers out there who are lined up to buy whatever Rolex puts out. The flexors desiring Rolex will even pay exorbitant figures on the inflated secondary market. I would hope that Rolex will use this current demand on their watches as a golden opportunity to expand their professional line, create new models, or seriously improve their dress watch line. But at the end of the day, Rolex doesn't need to do a thing. They can look down their noses at us unwashed masses clamoring for mere morsels and say, let them eat cake. After all, plenty of people will probably continue to bow to the crown.